uh, yeah, like, uh, like he said, I, I don't really need to introduce myself anymore, which feels kind of strange, I must say. And uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here, especially I would like to say thanks to uh, Telco and uh, uh, Sally for helping me a lot to get here and to give me advice how to move around and uh, for inviting me. So, um, yeah, I'm not really that much of a talker just by myself. Um, um, so that's why I ask uh, if this uh, stage time could be converted into a simple question and answer. Um, of course, I would like to tell some things, uh, um, general things about how everything started. Um, would, would you guys like to know how things started with the Ultimate? Okay. Now it's, uh, it's a long story because it already goes back about 10 years. Um, the ultimate uh, the whole idea. <clears throat> it all started with that uh, in the company that I work for, I also do electronics and uh, FPGA design. Actually, in the company where I work, uh, Technolution, that is uh, where I. I've started using FPGAs and built up uh, like uh, that, uh, that class of sport to, in, in, the, in the company. And because uh, I have a heart for Commodore 64, I started implementing parts of the Commodore 64 and FPGA back then. So a really long time ago, maybe more than 10 years ago. And. Um, as it uh, processed, uh, as it progressed, uh, there was this this girl from uh, America. You probably all know her, Jerry Ellsworth, who came to the Netherlands, and I met her in person. And um, yeah, she was uh, already way ahead of me in implementing the Commodore 64 and FPGA. So uh, I thought, yeah, why would I do the same thing? You know, why would I just be a me too guy? You know? Why would I do that? So. Uh, I decided to implement the 1541 floppy drive instead, instead of the machine itself, which was also easier. And uh, I demonstrated this at the uh, Commodore gatherings in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of interest, and um, then the idea came up to turn it into a cartridge. And uh, yeah, because it occupies the cartridge slot. I uh, decided to implement also a lot of uh, extension cartridges in the uh, in, in the in that design, so that uh, yeah people would not have to give up using their their cartridge. And um, yeah, so it all uh, all began. And uh, the funny thing is that I am um, a little bit naive. I'm a naive person, you could say. Um, in one of the gatherings where I demonstrated the first the prototype of the, of the 1541 Ultimate as a cartridge. Um, there was this uh, Swedish guy, and, um, I think it was Two Flower. Do you guys know him? Two Flower? Right. Um, so he said, yeah, you should uh, turn this into a product, you should sell it. Yeah. And I thought to myself, yeah, it's nice, I, it's, it's just a hobby. How could I sell this kind of thing? You know, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not a company. I'm just, uh, just an individual, a hobbyist. And um, yeah, I said, I don't really know. As naive as I was, eh? I said, um, who would be interested in such kind of thing? So it happened that um, he asked me, so how many do you think you need to produce in order to make it even feasible? I said, yeah, maybe 25, 40, 50, maybe. And he just laughed. And he said, you know what? You, you just go ahead. You just go ahead and produce them. I'll take this idea back to Sweden and I'll get you at least 40 people that want to have this, what you just created. That's how it started. So, yeah. And then the whole time of nothing, you know, if you could think, well, there's first Ultimate 1, then Ultimate 2, and then Ultimate 2 Plus, you probably have seen it. And then I thought, 
yeah. Back in 2011, it was already that I finished uh, the, the whole core, C64 core, because I did, still did want to finish it myself. And uh, I demonstrated it also at the computer, the Commodore gatherings. And um, yeah, it was a little bit too expensive to produce. And I thought, yeah, why would you produce such a thing as a, a, a new Commodore 64 motherboard if you can just get second-hand Commodores for almost nothing? So I never took that idea to a product until this year. And I, um, I started talking about it on Facebook and there was a lot of people who showed interest. And um, yeah, a couple of months later it is here. This is the Ultimate 64.
DMA delay, that uh, the DRM crashes, those kind of things. Um, it won't crash, that is what I can tell you. Um, the DMA delay itself will probably work. But the crashing won't. <laughs> um, the other question was about... Um, help me. Um, oh, other Commodore, other Commodore, of course. I'm doing this just by myself at this point, um, so I would like to concentrate on one thing at a time. Um, but technically it will be possible to run other cores, yeah, that is true. And um, the, the good thing is also that uh, there are some uh, some guys that are very interested in working together with me to get it better, get it perfect. So it, uh, it might, might happen, but uh, other cores will be there. For example, the guys from uh, Mega65, they are very interested to share the IP and, uh, and uh, work together. Could you tell us about the uh, digital audio video? Yeah, I didn't mention that uh, so well. Maybe I should mention a little bit more about the features of this board uh, to you. But uh, the digital output is uh, uh, yeah, um, an HDMI output, which uh, has um, like a double scan feature, so it makes it uh, 576p on the PAL uh, emulation. Uh, which is compatible or is supposed to be compatible with uh, all the uh, modern TV screens. It uh, includes audio, so the, the, uh, it's either the emulated SID or the SID or the sound from the SID sockets that is also on the board is uh, digitized uh, by a codec. An audio codec, so the, it can be merged with the video stream to the digital output. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? It can be a USB MIDI support. USB MIDI support, because MIDI card exists are really rare nowadays. MIDI music. Interface, you know. USB MIDI support. <laughs> I'm not planning on USB MIDI support, but uh, you're free to implement it. If you need any help to uh, have access to the code, to the code, uh, it is based on the Ultimate Tool application, which is also running in this uh, machine. So uh, it has USB, and uh, we can figure out a way to uh, displace it or connect it to the C64 core.
but I have learned that there are some very good um, uh, modern implementations or modern emulators for the um, ESP8266, which may easily be ported to this module as well. So if people want to help me with that, I would be very grateful. Um, another concluding word I would like to say. Um, I'm sitting here in front. Is, uh, um, if you want to see it in, in person or if you want to see it working, please uh, just uh, come over and have a chat with me. Uh, I prefer that a lot more than uh, being here on stage. Uh, actually, so. Thank you. the software that yeah that BGA uh, code and the firmware but if you do are you scared of uh, Chinese uh, makers who make copies of the hardware and just use your open source software and sell those without giving any uh, any profit to you I still haven't made my final decision about open sourcing it. Uh, if you know the, the 1541 Ultimate is completely open sourced. I have not seen any negative drawback or, uh, drawback or negative effect uh, so far. Um, I'm not really that scared of the Chinese uh, in that regard. Um, I think it's too small for niche market to be interested to, to be interesting for Chinese copies. So yeah, we never know. Um, the amount of feedback on the code of the 1541 Ultimate has been limited, I must say, from open sourcing it. But there are some people that have really um, have really made nice contributions, for example, the uh, printer emulation by uh, the French guy, uh, Benet. Uh, there are also, there's an IDE uh, version of uh, by Sochi folks uh, who has made it. Uh, so I think it is still beneficial for open sourcing, and especially if I want to uh, find the bugs in the in the in the Fig2 emulation, for example. There are, there are some real gurus here who know every little bit of it, and it would be rather stupid to try to fix everything by themselves. So I think open sourcing is not an option; it, should, it is obligatory. You will find Guillaume in the corner there, if you want to check the board, if you can get your yeah. ultimate signed, like I did, now's your chance. And maybe one more round of applause to Guillaume for coming here.